All right, well, good morning. My name is Philip Sylvester. I'm the Ag Agent in Kent County, Delaware, with the University of Delaware. Today I'm going to talk about uh, assessing the profitability of foliar fungicide programs uh, in mid-Atlantic soft red winter wheat. Um, I had to label that there because most of the wheat that we grow is soft red winter wheat compared to some of the other wheats that are growing throughout the country. So um, the, the work that I'm going to be talking about today um, is specific to our region, the, the mid-Atlantic states of Delaware, Maryland, um, a little bit of Virginia, and Pennsylvania. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the common foliar diseases that we have. It's a fungicide talk, but I have to talk about disease first. Um, some of the products that are being used, timings that they are being applied, and the impact that these fungicide programs are having on disease, test weight, yield, and of course you're here for profitability. In the end, that's what we're all interested in. So what are some of those common foliar diseases in the mid-Atlantic? Probably the most common foliar disease that we have um, are, are going to be those diseases residing in the leaf blotch complex. So when I say leaf blotch complex, I'm referring to uh, the, these three diseases, tan spot, septoria tritici, and stagonospora. They all produce very similar lesions uh, on the leaves where you're going to have this um, gray or brown center and sometimes surrounded by that yellow halo. These diseases uh, are very similar in the fact that they all reside on uh, crop residues. Uh, so they can overwinter on wheat residues uh, and can infect the growing crop. Um, there are some minor differences between the, the, the diseases within uh, leaf blotch complex. For example, septoria tends to be uh, a cooler season disease versus stagonospora or tan spot, which tend to show up a little bit later. Either way, these diseases work off a of rain splash and they start in the lower canopy and work their way up. So we're seeing a lot more of these diseases because of more no-till, conservation tillage, we're not completely burying that residue anymore, and therefore these, these, these types of diseases um, are more common. <coughs> some, of the, some of the other foliar diseases we might see uh, from time to time are gonna be the uh, rusts. Uh, these are sporadic in nature just because we need new spores from the southern US every year to blow up and provide new infections. This one, Seems like we're seeing a little bit more and more of the stripe rust here. You're seeing those yellow colored uh, lines on the leaves. Again, more of a cool season disease compared to uh, leaf rust, which is going to show up a little bit later. Um, either way, these, these pathogens have a very short spore, uh, spore to spore generation time. So they can blow up very quickly. It, on, if you have, especially if you have a susceptible variety under the right environmental conditions. Um, powdery mildew is another one that we've, we've had in the region. It used to be the number one disease. Um, I think it's kind of moved back a little bit and leaf blotch has taken its spot. Powdery mildew is one of those cool season diseases. We're going to see a little bit earlier in the season, lower canopy. Uh, and once it gets warm or too hot, uh, kind of it, it starts to stop the growth. So a lot of times it might not even reach the flat leaf, uh, though it may, especially with susceptible varieties. It doesn't require the, the rainfall, per se, that leaf blotch, or the leaf blotch complex requires. It just needs high relative humidity. So in addition to the foliar diseases, uh, we have some head diseases that can cause us some issues with grain quality and test weight. Bloom blotch is one that's cropping up because it's caused by the same pathogen that causes stagonospora leaf blotch. Those two are the same species that just cause different diseases. One's on the foliage, one's on the head. The problem with the infection on the head is that it's infecting those, those outer blooms there, um, which is reducing photosynthesis on the head and limiting some of those uh, uh, carbohydrates for grain fill. So we can see lower test weights with bloom blotch infections. And of course, we've, we've all heard about fusarium head blight. It's one of those diseases that everybody's managing for. Um, of course, and, and the issue with fusarium head blight besides reduced kernel size and test weight issues are the mycotoxins, right? So, so those are, those are mostly that's what you're going to see in the Mid-Atlantic region. 
Foliar diseases, diseases can cause yield loss, and the head blotches can cause, or the head diseases can cause issues with testing. So for managing diseases, we turn to fungicides most often. Um, there are other methods, but, um, but most of the time we're looking at fungicide use. This is a table, 2017 table. Um, we're, this is looking at all the products labeled for uh, use in wheat. So we have a lot of fungicides for use in wheat. Uh, they, they mostly reside in the DMIs, which contain the trizols. So those are the, the products that have been around for a long time, things like tilt. Um, in addition, the, the strobulorins came along after that, or the QOIs, so the quadrus, for example. But now we're really seeing a mixture or mixed modes of action where you're getting dual modes of action in, product, in products and even three-way mixes now. And by the third, the third mode of action that, that's recently hit the market is the SDHIs. So uh, your Trevor Pros, Preaxor, for example, Napocan SDHI, uh, mixed with a QOI or strobilurin and a trizol. The uh, strobilurins, I, I, we're all very common with them. Those are the ones that were uh, kind of touted as having that plant health benefit, even in the absence of disease, or some yield benefit there. Um, the SDHIs were very similar to the QOIs, the strobilurins. So those two are very similar in the way that they work on the plant. This is the efficacy table. So these are, when they conduct these trials, they're looking at very susceptible varieties, high disease pressure. Is there any difference between the individual products? And I just want to point out that um, there, there's not a lot of difference when it comes to efficacy between these products. You can see some good ratings, very good. That's for powdery mildew. This is for the leaf blotch complex. So um, nothing standing out as being poor. You know, we can have good efficacy with a lot of those products out there. This is the rust, once again, excellent to very good. And I do, do want to mention that for the head scab currently, only the trizol class is, is recommended for suppression of fusarium head blight. Applying a strobilurin or a product with a strobilurin past heading can actually elevate the level of Don in uh, the crop if it's infected with fusarium head blight. So that would be things like for Sarah, for example, is a trizol, Corumba, Proline. Okay, and this is a uh, this is the growth stage of wheat, uh, the, the feast growth stage at least. I prefer it over the hundred decimal uh, other other stage out there. Um, and this is broken out into uh, tillering or that early season, the stem extension, and uh, heading. So when, when are we applying the fungicides right now? I mean, most growers are um, looking, or a lot of fungicide applications are scheduled for certain timings, right? We look at the flag leaf being that old standby timing. A lot of fungicides are put on at flag leaf emergence. Peaks first stage eight or nine. Flag leaf comes out, we want to protect it. That's when it used to go on. But recently, We've moved towards a later application timing, right? For fusarium head, head blight and suppression, it needs to go on very specific 10.51, beginning flower. We see the anthers coming out, that's when it needs to go on or within six days of that. That's what the research is telling us. So this new timing, uh, we know a lot about fusarium head blight and suppression. We don't know a lot about what it does for foliar diseases. Can we hold on for that long and use that timing foliar disease suppression as well. In addition, these green up applications are becoming more common and are being touted as providing early season disease suppression. Throw a, throw a fungicide half rate in with your nitrogen on your second pass. Right? It's cheap, it's easy. So we wanted, wanted to, uh, so that, that timing is typically, because we know the fungicides don't last all that long in the plant is being combined with the later growth stage, right? So you're going to do a, a two-pass program typically with that, whether it's going to be coupled with this, you know, eight after eight or with this uh, flowering application. So let's just say feast first stage five followed by an application of flowering two fungicide passes. I've highlighted the flag leaf and the tissues above the flag leaf here. Um, these are the most important tissues to protect. 
These are what contribute over 95% of the carbohydrates or grain film. Damage to these tissues will cause you. This is just giving you a demonstration of what the different growth stages are. This is speaks five, so that's when the wheat stands up in the spring. Right, this is going to be your second. If you split your nitrogen applications, this is going to be timing for your second application. Feeds for stage eight, uh, a little bit taller. The flag leaf is typically standing straight up. And then with your uh, flowering application, as I mentioned, the heads are out. Uh, the heads are out, the anthers are protruding. This is actually a little bit later than 5-1, but these are the an anthers here. So what are you all doing for timings? And this was a question we posed to a group of farmers a couple years back. Uh, when do you put a fungicide on? As you can see, we had a lot of variation, but that peak screw stage eight was a pretty popular timing. Uh, but we're seeing that shift towards the, the, the flowering application. But we also have these early applications going on as well. This is a couple years old, so this is probably changing but over half of them said that they made two or more fungicide applications. All right, so I'm an extension agent and I get questions from growers and the questions I get most frequently regarding fungicides are which one should I choose? When should I apply it? And most importantly, does it pay to apply a fungicide? We really don't have great answers to that in the mid-Atlantic region. There's been a lot of work done elsewhere but really wanted to look at that, um, <coughs> look at the responses locally. So this was this research project was uh, initiated to try to get at those questions. I didn't want to use um, highly susceptible varieties, but really wanted to try to capture those conditions experienced by the grower. Right, that's what we want to do in research: is capture the same conditions so we can talk about it and make some sort of recommendation. So by using susceptible varieties, if you use a susceptible variety, uh, you can get a lot of disease on there, so you can overrate your, over inflate the response of a fungicide. And I was after that average response. So I'm not looking at just a susceptible, or not a completely uh, resistant variety. So I chose a variety with just really average resistance to some foliar diseases, high yielding, because that's what we're after, is a high yielding line. Um, put it in a field setting, still small plot work, but try to replicate exactly what, what I would do if I was a grower. And I am a grower, and I did put it in my field, so I'll show you that in a minute. And in order to make this average response, I needed a lot of sites in the Mid-Atlantic. So, and by the mid, but, and I'll show you that in a minute as well, but uh, I didn't have a lot of years, I only had two years to conduct this research, so I needed a lot of sites. So my goals were, basically to evaluate the impacts of fungicides. Just answer the question, what do fungicides do right off the bat? Uh, let's get that, let's, let's find out and see what happens for disease control, yield, what do they do? Then I want to compare, what do their single applications do versus multiple pass applications? So does a two pass program provide you with a greater benefit than a single pass application? Can we start to move that timing later for foliar disease control as well? that flowering timing compared to that, that old uh, the traditional fly leaf timing. And most importantly, better understand the profitability of some of these programs. So this is a two-year project uh, conducted in 2015 and 16. Uh, I conducted it at the uh, Carville Center down in Georgetown, the research farm there. Uh, the Warrington Irrigation Research Center Harvison at my own farm in Felton, Delaware. And uh, in in Queenstown, Maryland, at the Y Research Center, uh, I used a I used small plot work, like I said, so the plots were five foot by thirty. But I ended up replicating them six times in order to better improve um, the, the data, get some better answers, and chose this Growmark FS815. I looked through our variety trials, went over them, and said, okay, which ones are, which ones are yielding good? What's the resistance? We had ratings on this. I just wanted that average variety that a grower would choose, it looks like it's going to yield good, um, doesn't have resistance, not completely susceptible, just right in the middle. This is, uh, luckily, Google went overhead in May of 2015, so, um, which I, I love Google, but it, it's just fun to watch, but they ended up taking photographs of the plots. This is the plot in my house, so uh, it was actually under irrigation, and I was able to squeeze it right in between these two tracks. 
but you can see the different replications. There's actually 84 plots there um, underneath that. So that's one, one site. There's 84 plots because this was 13 treatments that I chose. And these are fungicide programs. And the way it's broken out is uh, these are the different fungicides I tested. And here's the timing that they went on. And they're broken down into programs. The first set of programs used Tilt, Quilt, Creaxor, and Stratego applied at Flyby. The second set of programs, again, used the same products, Tilt, Quilt, Creaxor, <coughs> and Stratego applied early at Green Up and applied again at Flyby. The third set would have been Tilt, Quilt, Creaxor, and Stratego early followed by Procero at Flowering or 10.51. And then of course have the Procero by itself at 10.51. So tilt, tilts, um, I chose tilt because it's a single active ingredient product. Um, there's a lot of generics out there. It, it represents that low cost propiconazole, you know, uh, that you can get. Quill and Stratego are both a mixed mode of action, so you have the strobilurin in there and the DMI. The Preaxor has that new SDHI in there, along with the QOI, and then of course the Procero is kind of that um, one of the, the fungicides that's labeled for Fusarium mm -hmm. headlight. I could have used Caramba just as easily, but Procero was 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 just chosen. So some of the data that I collected included the foliar disease on the flag leaf. I went through it soft dough and rated all the flag leaves. How much disease? I didn't care which disease it was. I just want to know how much was on the flag leaf. We know that's the most important leaf, so how much was on there. I also wanted to see if there's any gloom blotch on the head. So I took a, a rating of, okay, how much you know, gloom blotch do we have, looking at how many spikelets were affected um, by the number of heads. I also used the NDVI. They make these cool uh, handheld green seekers now. You go out in the field, just run along, it gives you a value. So I did that over all the plots right at the flag leaf, right when I took the flag leaf ratings. Ultimately, NDVI is just that quantitative measurement of healthy biomass, right? Give me a number for how green that plot is. And what I was trying to do is, in case I didn't get disease, be able to have something in the end. Do these fungicides make things green, right? So, and does that, would that actually help contribute to yield? And of course, uh, took test weight and yield. If you ever see one of these funny looking research combines in the field, that's what we're doing, we're harvesting our small pots. And then on board are all the weighing components, takes test weight and yield right on the go. So you have that data um, as it's going through the plots. All right, so now the stuff that you're interested in. Uh, the results. Um, well, lo and behold, the environments ended up being completely different between the two years, which is great, because it gave us a wide range of conditions, right? 2015 was one of those warmer years and drier years. So uh, we had below average rainfall, whereas 2016 was complete opposite, 14 inches of rain, and that's during the drying <coughs> period, just during those three months. So we had a lot of rain, and it was cool. Well, lo and behold, what happens? We get a little bit of disease in 2015. This was the untreated checks, so nothing sprayed in the untreated checks. You have 5 to 13 percent, and only the leaf watch complex showed up during that year on the flag. And in 2016, things turned around, we had 32 to 99 percent severity on the untreated check, so completely diseased, right? Mostly leaf blotch again, but this time some leaf rust showed up and so did some powdery mildew. No gloom blotch in 2015, so I really couldn't rate anything in 2015. Again, it was a dry year, so it's not going to move up to the head. Whereas in 2016, we ended up with some gloom blotch. So here are the results for the flag leaf severity or the amount of disease that's on that flag leaf. You can see the untreated check resulted in 40% disease on the flag leaf. All the fungicide programs did a reduce, significantly reduce the amount of disease on the flag leaf. Um, I wanted to highlight the, the early application, this, this early application plus the flowering application. Um, these are outlined here to show, kind of give you an idea that no matter what product was applied early, really that late product was the one that was reducing the disease and it, and it didn't matter. There were some differences um, between individual products in, at certain timings. For example, this is tilted eight at flag leaf, uh, quilt, excel, 
So there was a little bit of difference, um, and they were uh, significant differences, um, but not huge, you know, gaps, real, real huge gaps, but there were some differences with individual products. Is that an average of all four locations? Yes, okay. <coughs> over two years. Okay, so then, to make the data a little easier to digest, I collapsed the individual programs down into timings, okay? What if we just focus on application timings? So here on the y-axis, I have the disease severity, and here are the, um, the individual timings. So this is flag leaf, flowering, and then the early plus flag leaf, and then early plus flowering, right? So what do we see here? That the flowering timing uh, ended up with the lowest disease on the flag leaf. The addition of the early application really didn't further enhance that reduction on the flag leaf. Um, and it did actually a better job than the, than the flag leaf application. So there's more disease with the flag leaf application. Okay, how about uh, gloom blotch, the disease of the head? Um, this time, not all, I mean, all the fungicide program had, had a significant effect on the gloom blotch, but not all the programs actually were significantly different from the, the track. Numerically, it was the highest. But some of the programs didn't quite, they didn't get the gloom blotch, right? Like this, like uh, any of these, uh, some of these flag leaf programs or the early plus flag leaf programs. When we look at that as uh, a collapsed timing, uh, once again, this flowering application resulted in the lowest gloom blotch on the head, which kind of makes sense because it's the only application actually sprayed the head, right? It, the head wouldn't have been out in flag leaf. But when you collapse the time, you, we did end up with a significant result or significant reduction in gloom blotch even with the, with the other timings, though it wasn't that much different from the untreated check. Okay, how about NDVI? Um, all the fun, all fungicide programs resulted in greener, healthier plants. However, just remember we had disease, right? So we can't really say that it caused greener plants in the absence of disease because we had disease. But nonetheless, when I went over with the handheld, the healthier canopy um, that uh, was a result of all the fungicide programs numerically, these were very tight values, but there was some separation between the individual programs. Looking at collapsed timings, all that, all the time, different uh, application timings resulted in a significantly higher NDVI. Once again, the flowering application uh, resulted in the highest NDVI compared to the flag leaf application or the early plus flag leaf application, but not that much. Okay, how about uh, test weights? Um, the all the fungicide programs ended up increasing the test weight. Um, Looking at collapse timings, the flowering application resulted in the highest test weight compared to the flag leaf application and the untreated check. And yield. So the untreated, all the fungicide programs increased yield. And uh, the different, there was some difference between the programs. We can see, for example, this tilt was 77 um, versus this quilt uh, at Quilt early plus flowering at 83. So, and the entry you check was 71 bushel staker. So again, this is this is the average of all the results. <coughs> so once again, um, well, not once again. This is where things kind of took a little bit of an interesting turn. Um, the single application of flowering, not not different from the flag leaf application. So we didn't lose anything by just simply switching to a flowering application timing. We didn't really gain anything numerically, just a little bit, but not significantly different uh, when we added an early application to the flag leaf application. But we did get a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost with the early application plus the flowering application. It was small, but it was significant. So for that that portion, we've talked about everything except profitability. Um, any of the fungicide programs ended up reducing disease on the flag leaf. They increased NDVI test weight and yield. So the fungicide program worked, right? The two pass didn't really get us any greater disease control, uh, bloom blotch, test weights uh, compared to the single applications. So any of the other measurements before yield. That those late out flowering applications resulted in lower flag leaf severity, bloom blotch, and higher test weight compared to those tr traditional. Uh, 
peak square stage H timing, maybe we can shift towards that later timing for foliar disease control. We saw some slight differences between individual products, but no huge gaps there. And again, that, that early plus flowering application resulted in that um, small but significant increase in yield. However, relying on yield and disease control alone can be somewhat misleading, right? Because we want to know, we know that fungicides increase your production costs. You have to go out and buy the fungicides. Uh, you have to apply them with equipment or pay somebody to do it. So we know what we're really after is, was that yield increase enough to offset the application? Can I at least break even? And if I can, where should I put my money? Right? We already know the pro 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 all the fungicide programs increase. But as a grower, which one, which one would I want to put my money into? And this information really doesn't exist here in this region. So that's another reason for doing this project. Let's, let's look at this fungicide uh, profitability question and use this initial data. So I use the same data um, that I already have, that yield data, but in addition to that, put another site up in Pennsylvania at the Southeast Research Center in Penn State, and another one down at Virginia Tech at the Suffolk Research Station, just to kind of broaden that net and see if we can um, have any different responses there, and, and hopefully add to that average response. Also serve, took a survey of, of local agribusinesses for fungicide costs and custom application costs. Um, I was really after trying to answer the question, what is the likelihood of a fungicide program being profitable, and which ones are likely to be most profitable, or li likely to be profitable. I want to spare you all the gory details of data analysis that went into this, the hours, it's called meta-analysis, and it was guided by uh, a guy out of the Ohio State to help me do this, and that's the last thing I'm going to say about data analysis. So, um, what, I, what, it, what it did though for me was generate these probability of profitability graphs. So rather than just saying, Yes or no? Uh, let's talk about probabilities. What's the likelihood of something going to happen, right? So that's what that 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 data analysis did for me. It generated probabilities. This is a comparison of the flag leaf applications versus the flowering applications. Okay. This first graph has probabilities. So one would be a, you know it's going to happen, and zero is it's not going to happen. Okay. On the x-axis is your application costs. So $4 per acre all the way up to $45 per acre. So it's not surprising that as it gets more expensive, our probability of profitability declines, right? The line's going down. It gets more expensive, your probability of breaking even is gonna go down. This is $5 wheat, this is $3 wheat, and this is $7 wheat. I use $5 wheat today, it's the closest we have, I think, was like 425 in the Harrington yesterday. So I don't know, it's kind of holding steady, not doing a whole lot. So it's, you're looking at five dollar wheat, it might be a little the probabilities might be a little bit lower than, than that. But we have to choose a, a grain price to do this. So here's the four uh, peak screw stage eight programs, the Quill, Stratego, Tilt, and Preaxor, all compared to this Procero, this single application. So again, uh, the single applications at flower at flag leaf versus the single application at flowering. And all the lines quite honestly are very close together. So let's put in the range of values. Your probability, the range of probability uh, was from 0.49 to 0.56 for $5 wheat. So that would be for all the programs, that's just the range. By a $3 wheat, that drops to 0.39 to 0.43. And if I have $7, that goes up to 0.54 to 0.61. Here's the actual application cost based on that survey that I took, okay? Um, this is tilt right here, lower application cost, single active ingredient represents that, that cheaper fungicide. So, so here it is right under $12, um, and so as you, it's right about that point, little over 0.5 probability of profitability. Here's the other programs, um, a little more expensive we would expect because they're, they're um, their dual mode of action. So if you were to draw a line straight across here though, really the probabilities are pretty close together. Therefore, the grower could choose a flowering application and wouldn't necessarily lose any money. Okay, how about those early applications added to flag leaf? 
versus just a solo application of Flyleaf. What did those two past programs do for us? So same, same deal with all the graphs. You have your five, your three, and your seven. Um, these are the top, the top programs are those two past programs, so the dark line ones versus the single path programs. So yeah, it does look like maybe the two paths are a little bit higher, you know? Like I, I see, I see like this uh, quote, quote Excel early plus Procera at flowering is a little bit higher, it's on top, whereas maybe some of the other ones dropped down, but ultimately there wasn't this huge difference. It was 0.48 to 0.57. The values for three dollars and seven dollars. So here's what the programs ended up costing, or close to it. I had to make some generalizations here, but again, that tilt program was cheaper, even though it's the bottom line here. You know, like the probability is lower if you didn't have that value. You can see it's cheaper, so it actually keeps that probability up. The single pass programs are going to be cheaper than the dual pass programs, the two pass programs. But it, once again. Probabilities are very close if you draw a straight line across there. I did not include the cost of application at peaks for stage five. So that the farmer would have been going across the field anyway, uh, applying some nitrogen. So so that cost is not included in here. So that it would just be the cost of that rate of fungicide. Okay, and how about that flowering application? What happens if we add that, that early application at feet skirt stage five? What does that get us? So these are the five programs that we're comparing here. The early plus flowering versus the flowering application. The flowering application is actually the bottom line here. Range from 0.52 to 0.59, ranges for the other wheat uh, prices. So again, if you were to draw a line across here, we're pretty much similar. Um, there's a little bit of gain to the to the tilt program, but um, but it's not this huge like 10% or 20% gain by using adding that, that two pass program. So in summary, on profitability, um, it really goes back to your fungicide cost. These were just the values that I collected. And each grower is going to have their own, so that's going to slide that profitability scale. That's what this graphs are meant to do. You could pick your own application cost, and it will spit out a probability of profit. Um, both the flowering applications and the flower leaf, flower leaf applications resulted in similar uh, prob probabilities. So that's that's a benefit for those that are looking to try to make one fungicide application um, and and take care of foliar disease control. Um, even though there's significant yield increase with those two pass programs, um, it didn't result in a substantial increase in profitability. So over, in, in summary, uh, overall, leaf blotch ended up being the most common foliar disease that, that I found in, in this research. It did impact yield and test weight. So uh, all the fungicide programs ended up reducing disease. They increased grain quality and yield. Uh, those two past programs, as I already mentioned, didn't really result in a substantial profitability benefit. The flowering apps did as good as the flag leaf. And there's some additional benefits to that that wasn't part of this research. It would be good to add on to, but uh, you know, the, as I mentioned in the beginning, Darren had like can cause the mycotoxin issues. So now, if you're taking, if you're taking care of suppressing some of that fusarium head blight and taking care of foliar disease, you're killing two birds with one stone. I don't mean this uh, to, to give up everything as far as not continuing to walk your field. You need to be out there. Uh, we didn't have bad stripe rust in this research. But we know that stripe rust can move in early because it's a cool season of disease that can cause significant yield loss. You still have to go to your field, you still have to be scouting and looking out for, this, uh, out for these diseases. This is also an average variety with average resistance. If you throw a resistant variety in there, you know, this would change. If you throw a susceptible variety in there, this would probably change. So really this is just kind of a starting point. Hopefully one day we can develop a tool that birds could use to plug in their own information and then spit out a profitability. I have a lot of acknowledgement. Um, the Maryland Green Producers uh, funded this project, so I thank them. The University of Delaware, Georgetown, and Harveston Farm Crew, the University of Maryland Y Research Farm, Penn State, Virginia Tech, the folks at Ohio State for helping me with the meta-analysis, and then um, some of the ag businesses that were that helped me with the 
the um, fungicide cost data. 